Today I want to give you kind of an update video, but not one of the update videos I did about the whole current situation and what's going on in Colombia in regards to the quarantine and stuff. But just, it's kind of related to the quarantine, but I will tell you about more in the video. Welcome to How to Expat. My name is Sam and at How to Expat we help expats relocate. As I said in the intro, I want to give you kind of an update which is kind of a little bit hard to put a title on, but I'm just going to go away and explain what I want to explain. So we have seen in the last couple of months, and this is tied into the current quarantine situation, that if you apply for a visa, which you at the moment, if I'm correct, you can only do if you're inside of Colombia, but that might or might not, unfortunately, we don't really know, affect even further visa um, applications. So if you're thinking about getting a visa, this is very important for you, that at the moment people have, or foreigners have to uh, show that they have international health insurance, which wasn't really a requirement before, which isn't really in kind of a law I've seen, and which everybody or every government agent handles reportedly a little bit different. So I talked uh, uh, to a couple of people and to our lawyer, Alan Gongora, which we highly recommend. And they explained us, yes, this is actually a thing that people have to show health insurance or health certificates or no health insurance at the moment if they want to get uh, a visa, which the exact requirements are nobody really knows so uh, Alan also told me it's just from some a government agent uh, does it differently to another so some have kind of let's say if it's a one-year visa you have to be covered for 30,000 US dollars if it's a three-year visa for $60,000 some have completely other things so it's just a little bit difficult to know so at the moment if you're planning to get a Colombian visa contact Alan Gongora um, our lawyer, it's it's just, yeah, nobody knows exactly what's going on. So this is just another thing about Latin America. This is just a thing that can happen here where, yeah, there's just suddenly a new rule and nobody really knows why you should do it. And the other thing which is a little bit weird about this rule is if you have a visa, then you have to apply for Colombian health insurance. So you're actually covered inside of Colombia with the Colombian insurance because you technically would need to sign up even though not, lo not a lot of people do that actually um, and then on top of that you need your also your uh, foreign kind of travel insurance so I've yeah it doesn't really make sense to me but that's just how it is uh, I think an important thing to know and especially um, to keep an eye on if you plan for the next say the next six months to years of being an expat that and having a visa in Colombia that maybe you ask that or you just have that in the back of your mind um, then another thing is which is also was reported and we have we have uh, received a couple of questions from uh, clients and which was reported by Alan Gongora as well um, which is that people that have spent time in Colombia getting tax letters from the Colombian authorities even though they haven't spent enough time in Colombia, which is 183 days, um, which tells them they should file for taxes. How to go about that is either you just completely ignore it and don't care about it, or you ask uh, the lawyer again, Alan Gongora, if, or whichever lawyer you want to use, if you get a, a letter like this, what you should do. Be because at the moment, the government is really not playing around with the tax situation. So if you have plans of getting a visa or settling in Colombia or anything, you rather clear that up before yeah, just ignoring it. So yeah, these were kind of two tips. I have an extra tip, which I think it doesn't really fit in a video. So I do it in this video, which is kind of a patchwork video anyway. A lot of people ask me why I say yeah all the time in my videos. So I say yeah, for example, yeah, this is, I don't know, uh, this is my cell phone on the side, yeah, and this is what I think about it. Why I say yeah all the time. And it's because of, I think, this reason. First of all, I the, the nice comments, uh, I and thanks for that because I didn't really realize that. 
So I try to work on that because I see it's annoying too and I try to improve my being able to speak in front of the camera skill. Um, but it's, it's coming, I think, from two reasons. So I speak four different languages, which make, doesn't make it easy to kind of uh, compute everything I want to say. Um, then if you maybe didn't notice, uh, English is not my native tongue. Um, and in, in Europe, especially around, let's say, the French region, so which would be in France, uh, um, now see, for example, now I could choose my Spanish word, Alemania, so Germany. Um, and where I'm from, Switzerland, we have this am, um, where we say am, um, am, um, and you, if you speak to a French person, they always have uh, they, this er, uh, you know. Uh, I hope this, uh, no French people, uh, no French person sees that. But they have this er, uh, and I think the closer you are to French, which Switzerland is, it's a bordering country, the more you have this ah uh, in, in, uh, as kind of a filler word. And unfortunately, in, especially here in Medellin, you have that too, which is pues. So you say pues, pues, pues as a filler word for everything. So out of the four languages I speak, I have this kind of um, filler word, which in English you don't really have. So in English, you're just, you're dragging out the end of the word. Whereas in, let's say in German, you fill that with, um, with, with the, the ö uh or a uh or whatever. And just happened for me that I use this filler word, uh, yeah, in, in between that. So this is just, I don't know why this is in the video, but I think I thought I should put it in there if you're interested. That was already it for this video. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>